Time now for our community update this morning. And joining us for the first time is the town of Grand Chute Police Chief Greg Peterson. Thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. Well, the department concluded its investigation into Officer Bryce Law Luzerne, who allegedly made racist and homophobic posts on social media. So tell us about the outcome. Yeah, you know, this investigation began when we received an anonymous complaint of uh, this activity, the social media activity by the officer. Um, you know, the, the posts that were shared were offensive in nature, but they were written back when he was in high school, a sophomore uh, through his senior year in high school. Uh, nevertheless, our concern was that they reflected his values today, and as such, they could impact the manner in which he performed his job. So, you know, we did a comprehensive investigation of that situation. We looked at a variety of factors. Uh, we looked at the, uh, the actual post or social media history, his internet history. Uh, we looked at the statistical analysis of his, uh, the demographics of his arrest activity. Uh, we looked at all of his arrest body camera video from his arrests of African American members of the community, as well as a like number of arrests of uh, white suspects. Uh, we've looked at his use of force activity and his personnel complaints. And after looking at all this information, we just determined that there was really nothing uh, that suggested any bias in the manner in which he did his job. Okay. Uh, we also looked at the, the uh, uh, involvement in our hiring process back three years ago and all of the people we talked to about his character and did an additional 12 uh, or so all interviews right. with people who knew him and could speak to his character. And at the conclusion, we were satisfied that there really was nothing uh, of concern related to his performance. Okay. So we presented these findings to the Police and Fire Commission and told them we didn't anticipate filing any charges uh, for his removal, and uh, they supported that, that outcome. Okay. Your department is accredited by the Wisconsin Law Enforcement Accreditation Group. Why is that so important, especially now? Yeah, we've been accredited for about six years, but it's probably never been more important than it is right now. Uh, through the accreditation process, there are a variety of policies that we have to comply with uh, that are relevant to the national discussion that we're having today about policing. Uh, for example, uh, we have to investigate every use of force uh, that we engage in, and officers have to write a report for every single use of force. Uh, we have to provide medical care after every use of force if it's necessary. Uh, we also have to have a structured disciplinary system, and we have to have policies that prohibit uh, biased-based policing. So these are all the discussions that we're having now on a national level, and by virtue of being accredited, we have to comply with all of these uh, various standards. Okay. Now, your town is experiencing an increase in drug overdoses and deaths. Tell us about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, basically, since the pandemic started, we've seen an uptick in our overdoses. Uh, we had, uh, up uh, year to date last year, a total of four overdoses. And uh, we're at 19 this year for the same time period. Uh, last year, we had no deaths uh, by overdose. Uh, and this year, we've had two. And I'm confident that those numbers would be higher if it weren't for the fact that officers carry uh, Narcan with them and can administer that because in 15 of those 17 uh, overdoses, uh, non-fatal overdoses, Narcan was administered and it reversed the, um, the overdose. So, you know, we're confident those numbers would have increased. So we are redoubling our efforts with respect to uh, drug enforcement activity, and, and we're going to do what we can to try to curtail you know, uh, that, that uh, growing problem. Now, due to the pandemic, the department had to cancel some events and programs. Which ones and why? Yeah, you know, the big ones that uh, we've had to cancel in the town are our uh, National Night Out, which is an uh, excellent event for us. And also our fire department has had to cancel their annual safety day. So these are two events that are, that are great community events. They, they bring out uh, large numbers of our community. And uh, we're really sad to see them go. We'll certainly come back strong next year, hopefully. We've also had to cancel a number of smaller events. We do, our ride-along program has been canceled. Uh, our uh, smaller outreach events and activities have been canceled. And Citizens Academy has had to have been canceled for 2020 due to the uh, uh, COVID situation. Now, you're working with retailers regarding face mask policies. Yeah, we are. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, the, the mask issue nationwide is a, is a huge issue, very controversial. Uh, there's no mandate in the state of Wisconsin at this point in time. There's no ordinance in Grand Chute or in the Fox Valley. But yet, many of our retailers are, are adopting um, mandatory mask policies. So we wanted to talk to them about enforcement of those policies. We can't assist with enforcement. These are store policies, and uh, consequently, we were concerned that they might call us to assist in enforcement. 
and we've told them we can assist them with respect to um, uh, disturbances that might occur, mm -hmm. uh, the need to remove a customer, but not with the actual enforcement of those, of those policies. And also we want the community members to know that if they see somebody in the store who's not wearing a, uh, wearing a mask, um, it's, not a, if, it's not grounds to call the police department. We're not in a position to come out and assist in enforcing that particular policy. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate You're it. You're very welcome, Shelley. All right.